Welcome back to another video on Gearsaw Studios, and today I'm going to be showing you how to renovate your ancient city. And this is part two of the tutorial. So without further ado, let's investigate how we'd go about this. And no palette screen this time, because I'm going to be honest, nothing's changed. This is just a continuation where I left off. So what you want to do right now is one, try fixing the sauna up if you have one. I recommend using giant walls. You can see these are, well, quite ruined, but if you manage to use them, you could make some really interesting stuff. You can see that entrance there. Who knows, that could be a castle wall entrance. You mirror it to this side, or you can do something different with the pillars that are already here. Either way, that's a good way to start off with the sauna. And then for the other rare structure that still has a use, the ice box. Remember, you can make it a 3x3 entrance because you can see the structure is actually off-centered. Don't forget to utilize the basement. Even if it's not very useful for anything, you should still be trying to use it, considering it's a weird a situation that you don't have access to in the rest of the structure. You can use icy blocks and such. So do with that as you please. Right here, I have the sauna, and you can see I did quite a few adjustments. Made this pool a little bit deeper, added some candles, a little terracotta structure that's meant to resemble a flower, a fake cactus right here, and then a bunch of other miscellaneous things. I also turned one of the buildings into an actual sauna room. I put a campfire under the magma for reference, and then I put some more campfires under the actual pool of water up here, which, of course, campfires with basalt under them in order to make it look like there's ash. Of course, you can navigate around this, and these pillars were repaired, a central one was added, and a whole bunch of other things. Feel free to pause in case you're lost. And another thing I did was I added some walls around, because you can see here, well, there's not exactly enough room to decorate down here. It would be a huge hassle to do, so I decided I'd just cover it up. And it's a pretty simple solution, and it will save you a lot of time. It's up to you whether you want to do that. For very far angles like this, it's a little less necessary, but still, perhaps consider it if you're on a time crunch. And then, for the rest of this place, the ice box, I turned it into a snow farm with a few other adjustments. You can see it's now properly centered, a bit more snow and ice up here, and down here, a snowman with a micro snow farm here few other things, nothing super interesting when it comes to new concepts, and otherwise I just made one of those tiny rooms into a mining area and removed the rest of them that I wasn't going to touch, along with making one into a crop farm that is not very efficient at all. So note, please just farm on the surface, don't try growing crops down here unless it's an automatic crop farm. Anyways, it's now time for our paths. And this really comes down to what area of the build you're working on. For this area over here, next to the entrance, try using one of these little stairs you have to step down. Because you don't want a giant path, instead you just want maybe a few winding ones that go to the important areas, leave this area empty in case you need another building, and otherwise, yeah. And then right here, you can leave some space for another building. Essentially, you can leave a lot of space for whatever you need. Maybe a melon or pumpkin farm, or something else I'm not considering. Essentially, some of them can be even numbered, or some could be odd. This one will end up being three wide, and you can even change the dimensions part way through. So, start off by laying down a bunch of deep sight tiles that go to where you want to go. And don't be afraid to remove the original paths in case they don't fit what you're trying to do. Right here, I put down my first pathway. And you'll notice it has a bit of a resemblance of the lanterns because the copper bulbs and this entrance. And that's the intention. It's just a scaled down version with some minor design changes. Of course, the stairs are now used in order to texture it. And what do you know, it's a functional pathway. Whenever I need to go somewhere, it opens up, and now I have a path. Make sure to not make it perfectly linear, like right here I can use stairs because it's just small. But right here, notice how it's more rounded, makes it a lot more elegant. So with that in mind, you want to continue this. And now I want another area where you can go down. 
you can see the bridge ends and then it goes up to this structure which is meant to be a bubble elevator but i'm not going to be building that so it's basically a miscellaneous structure notice that it just uses soul fire and skulk and otherwise introduces nothing new to the concept the only thing that can be considered new is the skulk catalyst which i just used because it looked cool otherwise you just want to integrate things into the walls occasionally here and there pretty much these little arches here by adding them and scaling them up to various places and now i repaired this altar just to make sure it's a little extra decor and you'd probably say this is done however no that's not how it works notice how bland it is without any of the ruins or skulk everywhere you'll realize that the ancient city isn't the most full environment how bare everything is and even though we'll have bridges Still, it's just not the most interesting structure without all the extra decor, so we'll have to add it ourselves. Don't forget about introducing blocks that might not naturally occur, such as copper grates in case you want to mechanize it a little, and try various things like that. Lanterns, benches, animal pens, possibly even new structures if you have the time. Essentially, if you have a big area like this, we'll do something with it. The more empty areas you have, the worse the build is. But if you fill it all in, then you'll have a very, very nice mega base. And for cases where the boundaries aren't clear, I determine it based off of the farthest structure. You can see this altar, which I haven't fully fixed, and this weird arch thing where I'll put another portal are at the edges of the structure. So that's as far as you need to go. Everywhere else can keep its skulk and everything else. Right here, you can see this area is now completed, and this is a major jump cut, however, there's good reason for this. Trying to go through every single thing you can do would not necessarily be worth your time. Instead, think about this. How much empty area do you have? When I had all these buildings gone in the last clip, it was very barren, so I filled them up with random things. Made an animal pen down there and decorated it like a real building. Then I made this wall area here, very dark, but I can just turn on night vision. And you can see a door there, just to make it look a little bit larger, even if you don't plan to put anything inside of there. Then I have this little thing here, or if you walk around on it, a bunch of skulk sensors below it. We'll do a little bit of funniness, and yeah, that's not exactly survival feasible, but still fun. So, I left it in. You can always make it if you have a skulk farm, actually. But, of course, I don't do redstone tutorials, so you're going to have to find an alternative for that. And I incorporated some water, some skulk catalyst below it for lighting, and then I added a quick area for redstone. In case you don't want to go into creative or just need to test something, hypothetically you're playing on a server such as Paper MC, where the redstone physics are all sorts of whack. Well, test it out here. So, you can see how much area I've filled in. And this is your objective. Go in and try and fill up the area. You can see I added a staircase down here. Not the best staircase and I accidentally left it unfinished. Whoops. But basically what you do is you go through and you make sure areas are properly decorated with literally anything. If there's something there, then it's immediately better. So try filling up as much of the city as you can. You can see I left a bunch of staircases down here. Now I can make little walkways to wherever. Try to make them odd numbers, so if you have an even number walkway, potentially add something to mix it up and put it back to 3 wide, slash 5 wide, slash odd number. And then, when you have all those bridges, continue filling it up with smaller things. And yeah, it's not the most complicated thing, but the little things that you can do are what make the build come to life. Going over here, you can see I added some mangroves, and you'll have to prune a few of the leaves and vines if you want to put mangroves so close to a walkway, but the idea here is I have this little overhang here, and then I can connect it down here to this part of the ancient city. And you'll notice I did a little bit less, mainly because time constraints. Yeah, it turns out doing a whole ancient city takes more than two weeks. So I just put down some plants here, some lava, had the walkways and I converted it by just chopping off some of the decorations I had here 
and you can see you don't need a crazy fancy bridge each time. Just a walkway will suffice. And of course, the little extra ones going around, it can be a little bit darker if you're not doing anything with them, but still I recommend at least a few candles, so light up areas like behind buildings. And then, for the night vision version, you can see nothing too major really changed. I just added a little bit of greenery here and there, and otherwise, yeah. But there's one thing I would like to say. A lot of ancient city rebuilds typically just replace all the deep slate with moss or some other greenery. And honestly, I think that's a little bit overdone. When you do that, you really open up your options too much. By forcing yourself to do a little bit more limited by not using so much greenery, such as this limited trees here and there, and then some for bees, well, you actually force yourself to do a little bit more with what you currently have. Who knows, you might want to even use shriekers for something, given skulk sensors. So, there's a lot of things you can do. Continue on with the decoration, and I'd say go maybe about here, you can see roughly. I cut out a lot of buildings around here, so it's a bit flatter, but still, make sure it goes typically to the walls, and if you have nothing to fill something up with, just go to your pathway, scatter it out like this, and what do you know, you have an open area. Because it's unreasonable to try to fill up the whole ancient city in one building session, or several in a row. So I recommend not doing that, and simply moving on with your life. Continue on with the bridges, and then I'll show you how to repair this one for this section over here. Don't forget pillars exist as well. Right here, you can see that I've continued building this. Of course, I left the lush caves piece in place because it just looked cool. But otherwise, I haven't really done anything new with the concept. All I did was added more skulk, more soul fire. I made sure to add a lava moat. I guess that's a new thing. And you can potentially hide something if you make a little underground cavern here. But otherwise, if you just continue doing what you're already doing and putting in the essentials like the dyes and such, you'll be able to build a lot of this. Of course, I'm still trying to avoid using grass, so I'll try using alternatives such as mud or green terracotta. Mainly because one, you're going to get the generic color down here, and two, it's just overused. Anyways, it's now time for the rest of this place, and a quick night vision view, even though this part's a bit brighter due to the lava and the presence of a lava farm. Well, it's now time for this, and you'll notice there's already a pillar here, and I'm going to repair this. And there's not actually much you need to do. Potentially add some stairs, replacing these 2x2 two two blocks here, and then replacing the deep slate with something like deep slate tiles or cobbled deep slate. Then copy this. Place a bunch of them, and what do you know, you have a cool pillar scape. Use this whenever you don't know what to do. And remember, you can weave in empty areas if it's getting too much. I mean, I already had to delay this video by quite a bit, and even with the power of world edit, it's still taken me almost a month to do this. So if you aren't able to fill everything out, no worries. For this section, I'm now starting to convert this bridge. You can see this loop-de-loop -loop segment. I just made more of it stairs, and then otherwise left it untouched. A few pieces here and there are deep slate because of a command I used, but otherwise, there really isn't too much to talk about with this particular structure, besides, it makes a pretty good nether portal structure. Anyways, here's the night vision view, and what I recommend doing is somehow turning your path from a 4x4 four four to a 5 wide. And I do this pretty simply by adding a balcony here. Nothing much more to say because, well, this is a pretty niche case. Right here, I don't have the time to build another structure, so I just left it unfinished. You might want to put some shulker boxes nearby and make another bedroom. This one's a lot smaller than the other one, but it's still kind of cozy. And I'm not entirely sure what's cozy about Skulk, but I kind of like it. Of course, typical rules of building apply, use the stairs and such. And then for the actual bridge itself, Get rid of this middle wall segment, it just doesn't really have much of a place in the build anymore, especially since you, this city is yours now. There is no need to have divided paths to make it simpler to walk, because it's no longer a city, it's now your giant palace. And then for these lights, replace them with normal lanterns, and replace the columns of polished deep slate 
with the brick version. Then smooth it out like this. And then whenever there's a column, maybe do something like this. Might want to replace this bottom part with skulk just for the extra flare. Something like this. More stairs on top. And then up here, you might want to add a little bit more of an overhang with more stairs. Of course, there's wider segments, but you can easily adapt this by simply just moving things around. And what do you know? That's not a problem anymore. For the staircases, you can leave them as is. You can make a walkway here, even if it's going to be pretty useless. And otherwise, you continue this along. And then for this top part here, I wouldn't pay too much attention to it. Besides your typical fixings, adding of stairs, because, let's be honest, who's using the upper part now? You already know what the city looks like, so you don't need that vantage point anymore, and it needlessly complicates the bridge for normal survival usage. Essentially, just use this central area down here, and make it one big path with deep slate tiles. If you want to, you might even want to remove the wool on the ceiling. Right here? You can see the bridge is complete, and what I did was not actually too crazy. So here, I already talked about the skulk, and then the pillars, the lanterns. I made sure that not all the segments had lanterns, so it wasn't perfectly lit. Then, I turned those spikes, and then made them taller, curved inward, and I removed the roof off of it, along with the center wall. Decorated the floor, as is customary with these kinds of bridges. And then I alternated these to give it a rib-like look. And then over here, I started adding a fountain. This one has really wacky water physics, but I think it still works. Don't forget, walls can be waterlogged, which is what I did here. Then I added a platform all around. Not the best lighting, so more night vision, I guess. And you can see more pathways going around. Don't forget, if you have a nearby structure, you can just add a bridge to it. I decided it was too boring to have a walkway, so lava pit it is. And then for here, more skulk outlining these structures. Of course, some parts are still a little rough around the edges, but trust me, a lot of deep sight bricks can go a long way. And if you're in doubt, just use deep sight bricks. As you can see, I was in doubt quite a bit. But anyways, what you want to do is continue incorporating things. You don't need to have a crazy backdrop each time, especially if it's for time constraints, but it's always appreciated if you can. And even then, something small is better than nothing. And then down here, a little mural of a sunset on a beach, and this can be a little turtle area if you need it. Right here, I have a big soul fire pit, and I turned one of these pillars into a repaired version. Notice how I used the stairs in order to create these pointed bits, and otherwise left the design mostly intact. What I recommend doing is copying it a bunch. You can make them go to the ceiling, but since the ceiling was quite uneven and tall here, I decided to just do fire. And it's up to you whether you want it to be fire or soul fire and just leave the normal fire in the middle, but yeah. Now, copy those pillars, and it's finally time to move back here. And you can see, there's a lot of empty space from all the structures I got rid of. And that's perfectly fine. You can fill it up with more things, or leave some pieces just open for building, etc. All you need is another pathway going through, and a few interesting things going on. And once you're done with that, there's an optional part of the build I'm not going to cover because it takes so long. You might want to make a lot of the blocks cracked, such as not having such perfect walkways for an ancient city. It's up to you on that one, but personally, for a build of this size, I don't think it's 100% necessary, although for more frequented areas like the middle, perhaps you want to do it anyways. Now, with those pillars in place, you can see a nice dark view of this, and personally, I'd say it looks really good. Don't forget about minor decorations like candles here and there. Without them, they might look a little bare. Compare this to what are anything else on this walkway, and you see, well... It looks nice, but there's another thing. Notice all this skulk here that just randomly appeared. This is completely intentional. And what I recommend doing is for any area that is well within the city, you're turning on night vision again because, you know, that's a recurring theme here now. Well, you'll notice I have these areas and I can't fill all of them in. Simply, it's too much work. 
So I just fill them in with skulk, put some deep site bricks around them, and what do you know? It's a nice little interesting area. I recommend doing this for the entire city. Although almost everything's taken up by buildings, there are still little areas here and there that will slip between the cracks, especially near pillars, that you can fill in with some skulk. And this can majorly reduce the workload, because, well, it's already an accent block in this build, and since all of it was removed, well, you can add it back because you likely have a lot of it, or simply have the means by this point because how much resources you put in, yeah, you can probably build a skulk farm. And now, what you want to do is make a walkway to any area that is closely linked, see that walkway to this area, and continue what you've been doing. Making sure to incorporate the skulk, your soul fire, the pillars, and then don't forget about nearby buildings incorporating what they're doing. Such as this building, hmm, you might want a little farm nearby. Or this, maybe some lava. I was originally going to put the dripstone here, but I decided to put it over there because I forgot about this spot. But still, try incorporating things like that throughout the build, and then if you have a big area and you don't know what to do with it, just leave it blank. You're going to find something you need, and you can fit it down here. It's a whole city. There's room for a lot of things here, so don't worry about that. Right here is the ending of the build. Behind the portal itself, you can see that I just did a bunch of walkways to the various objectives. You have the amethyst lining along with the skulk. I ended up reusing a lot of elements from other parts of the build, but it doesn't actually stand out too much, mainly because it fits. If you don't know what to do, don't worry, you can always reuse things. And then, I kind of added miscellaneous farms here and there, kept adding more skulk in order to fill stuff up, and I added the pillars again. I swapped out their fire for soul fire because it made the middle less important. And then, I added a decorated pot showcase. You can put the shards on these in order to make sure that they're nice and decorated in case you ever wanted to make a trophy collection of those, with a tiny blacksmith area down here in case you ever smelt down armor because uh, you're a maniac. Yeah, who actually smelts down armor? But anyways, I ended off with some cacti. Not exactly a super bombastic ending, but it gets the job done. The walkways you can see, well, they're not the most interesting either. I just did some pillars that point inwards, more candles, the usual. And then right here, in the dark part, yeah, you can put a skulk sensor with a shrieker on top in order to annoy passerby, leaving in some open areas for future builds, and what do you know, it's finally complete. And I'm just gonna say this right now, I've spent more than 30 hours on this. I have been playing Minecraft for 8 hours for this session, and pretty much all I have to show for it is like, some wrapping up stuff for here, and then this entire area back here. It takes an incredibly long time to do this. Hence why it's taken me almost a month to get both parts of this tutorial out. So, you know, I'd appreciate a like and subscribe. I mean, it's inevitable that if I post a picture of a wither storm, I'm going to get more views anyways. But still, you have an entire ancient city if you follow this through. Even if it takes an exorbitantly long time, it is a full-on mega base with anything you'd ever need. And there's always that extra room, so pretty much if you really had the patience and time to do it, you can make this a mega base. And what do you know? You'll have a really large expansive base with a cool vibe, completely mob proof due to the deep dark, and it's going to be an interesting experience living underground. So if you have the time or really just don't know what to do for a mega base, maybe try this out. You're never going to run out of the room, and if you ever needed resources, what do you know? You're already at Bedrock Lair. And with that, it's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, remember, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. Either way, enjoy the rest of your day. Gearsoft.